How do you become an A&R in the music industry today and what do they actually do? That's what we're talking about in this video. What's up guys, this is Omari with No Nonsense Music Marketing, the number one place for music business and industry advice online. If you're not subscribed already, are you even a serious musician? Because serious musicians know that they need to take advantage of this information quickly so that they can outpace their competitors, other artists, other artists that uh, are lazy, that are not doing the things that they should be doing to further their music career. So if you're serious about it, click that subscribe button. Uh, but today we're talking about a and R is how how that role has really changed in recent years in the music industry, especially with the advent of the internet and social media. Uh, but firstly, just what is an A and R for those who don't know? Uh, stands for artists and repertoire. Uh, just essentially somebody who goes and finds talent for a record label. So back in the day, you used to have to. There, there was no internet, right? So you had to go out to club. You had to go find that local talent, whether whether it be in church or somewhere else that. Uh, you had to find the talent, see if they wanted a music career, and then kind of nurture them up. They used to have more talent development back in those days where um, if you could sing, but you know you still needed fine tuning, they would do some more artist development. These days, uh, they're not doing as much, labels aren't doing as much artist development. Like if you want to go learn how to sing, you have enough resources now that you should have at least taken some steps. Not to say that no label has vocal coaches, obviously they do, uh, but you should have at least used some resources on the internet, such as free YouTube videos. You have cheap courses out there. If you are serious about it and you wanna do like a structured approach, take a, a course, it's not gonna cost you all that much money uh, to learn how to sing or work on your delivery for rapping or uh, work on your production skills, all that stuff is very easily accessible today. So that rule has changed a little bit. The NR doesn't have to really worry about the, the talent development side as much. Um, now they just are looking for the people. Uh, so that's what an A&R is. So how do you become one? Let's say you want to become one. First, you do need to find great artists that aren't viral yet. Why, why do I say aren't viral yet? Because if somebody's already viral, they can benefit from the structure of a record label. Like the, the label still has something to offer them, but a lot of times they kind of don't need you anymore. Especially if they built their own team, if they know how to uh, hire a manager, if they know how to use paid social, um, obviously if they know how to make reels and TikToks, then Essentially, at, at some point, it's like, well, well, why do I need you? Uh, they they now have a lot more leverage, even if they do go into the deals uh, with record labels or you guys going to deals watching this. You have a lot more leverage at that point to sign with a record label where you, you either don't have to sign as long a term, you have more equity. So that is why if you want to become an A&R, um, the best place to look is to find great artists that aren't viral yet. So if somebody has a great voice, but maybe their mixing is off or their mastering is off, or they can't make very good reels. You have to be on the hunt for these people because they're not going to pop up right in front of you because they, they, they're not very good at marketing, right? Uh, so that is key number one. Find great artists that aren't viral yet. Uh, next is you have to be social on social media. This is where all the talent is. Uh, you can still go to live shows and find some talent that way. Uh, but even those people, whether they shout from the stage, hey, go follow me on Instagram, go follow me on TikTok, go follow me on YouTube, follow us on Spotify. Um, what they should be saying is go subscribe at our website, which we talk about on this channel a lot. Uh, if you're on stage, this is just a sidebar. Uh, if you're on stage, you should not be shouting out your social media. You don't own it. You don't own Instagram, you don't own YouTube, you don't own TikTok, you own your domain name. And the other thing that you own is the files on your website and the emails on your email list. Those are the things that you own. So if you're on stage, you need to direct people to something that you own. If you're pointing everybody to Instagram, let's say you say something that Instagram doesn't like, and then they ban you or they shadow ban you. You, you've now spent all this money uh, pointing towards something that 
can be taken away from you. Even if you think that will never happen to me. Um, if let's say you're not in, as incendiary as as I am, even though I'm not even the the most incendiary person, uh, but let's say you you just say something they don't like. There you go, boom, taken away from you. Uh, and do you really want to live your life in a way that you have to agree with everything social media companies say? Otherwise, they just they just pull you from it. Like you're just gonna bend every opinion and view, viewpoint you have to the way that they're telling you to think and what to say. And therefore, you just don't say anything when you're on the platform to talking to anybody in real life or at your job or whatever. That's a personal decision. That's up to you. However, any wise business person, you need to send them to something that you own. All right. Sidebar done. Uh, next tip for this one, becoming an a &R. Take lessons on ear training, mixing, and mastering things like that. Just because you think you know uh how how to spot good music does not mean that you know how to spot good music uh you want to be a step above everybody else in knowing that okay this artist does have a good voice but it wasn't you know there was something off in that song you want to know what exactly was off uh so whether you take singing lessons even if you know you don't plan on becoming a singer you at least take the lessons to know all right they're going to need this this and this um if i start to work with them in the mixing and mastering uh, so that you can hear in their their songs that okay they did have a good voice but it was their mixing that was off um, or or this song needed to be mastered better and that would have just made their their voice really come out of the song uh, so take lessons on ear training mixing and mastering next is you want to network with record label professional professionals at live events uh, and also on social media and be helpful to them. Like don't don't just be another person that asks the same generic questions. Do a little bit of research on these people beforehand. Um, this one you you would have to live in more of a city that's friendly for networking events and where musicians and festivals and, and all that sort of stuff, uh, conferences especially. The music festivals aren't as friendly for networking, but especially if it has a conference component, a lot of People are starting to do more things like this. Uh, you have the guys that earn your leisure, shout out to them, that start to do an investing conference and then have the concert at the end of it, or things like A3C or uh, South by Southwest. Uh, these are very, very prime locations for networking uh, because people, like they like to show up and um, you wanna network across more than you try to network up. So the people who are on stage are oftentimes getting bombarded by people after they give a talk and thus they're very hard to network with. But you never know who you're talking to if you just, you know, the guy sitting next to you, the lady sitting next to you. Hey, what do you do? Just be friendly, right? Just be a friendly person and do your homework on people, especially if you're going to try to talk to somebody who that was on the stage. Uh, do your do a bit of homework on them so that you ask good questions and you stick out and then one trick for this to get people from uh, record labels or anybody you want to network with to remember you is that if you take a picture with them, uh, they are much more likely to remember you. Like you can take, don't, don't have to be creepy about it, right? But you're in line so waiting to talk to them. Um, you know, just, hey, I've been following you for a while. You mind if I take a picture? People, people have done this to me. Like I've never said no. Like I, I don't want to take a picture with you. Hey, I've been following you for a while. Really appreciate your content. I was watching this on YouTube. Ask me a good question. And then, oh man, I appreciate that. Can we take a picture together? Of course. Of course we can take a picture. Uh, and then you tag that person when you upload the picture on social media. Uh, or, or better yet, if you got their email, you know, shoot them the picture. Hey, I don't know if you want this picture um, for, for any marketing purposes, if you're uploading stuff from the conference, but here's the picture. There you go. You're fresh in their mind now. Uh, you're attached to like your face is in that email, or even if you get their phone number, um, then you can text them the phone, uh, text them the picture to the phone number too. Uh, that way you stick out from everybody else uh, and make sure you don't do that like five days after the conference, do that as soon as you can, like the next day or the same day really, uh, so that you could be fresh in their mind. Uh, you got a picture tagged together or better yet emailed or texted to them. And that way uh, you can network with people. That is one tr very good way to network with people that are, you know, have more influence than you do. Uh, but you can also do that with people who are 
at the same level you are that way they definitely remember you because not as many people are asking to take pictures with them so if it's somebody that you've been following you know they're going to be at a conference maybe it's one of the speakers that isn't as popular right that way um you when they do get more successful you were one of the people that was always helpful to them that you networked with them you kept up with them uh you kept a log of your network you can do this very easily on google sheets keep a log of all the people you want to network with keep a log of when you reached out to them and then reach out again in two months like there's people who are better than me at this i'll shout out one right now rick barker very good very good networker um probably the best that i've seen in, in networking always helpful knows how to reach out knows how to connect people uh so follow him uh go to his website and um look at how he does stuff. pay close attention to how he does things as well and then uh lastly i already said this one but researching the people um before you do the networking you just want to hone in on that you can uh, now don't be creepy about it don't be weird but when you're researching somebody um find out what you guys have in common or something that you found very interesting on one of their videos or posts on social media uh if you can name something specific again like something that most people don't mention or don't think about then you're going to stick out a little bit you want to find anything that makes you unique makes you stick out makes you stand out from amongst the crowd so that you can be remembered without looking desperate. There's a lot of musicians these days that are taught sometimes by record labels uh, that you you have to appear desperate. It's almost like the desperate for attention in order to stand out. Like you're so otherworldly that the, the common person is not going to understand how how different you are, and then you just become a character of yourself. Uh, I'm not talking about that type of standing out. I'm talking about being intelligent. Um, being unique, yes, but standing out in a classy way. Uh, so if you do all these things, uh, that way you'll be on the radar of any company that has a job opening for a &Rs, or if you want to become your own a &R, start your own record label sort of thing, these are the tips that you can use. Uh, so people, myself, other business owners included, would much rather prefer hiring somebody that they came across, they networked with, that kept up with them uh, versus going to job boards. Oh, there's anything wrong with job boards. Um, we've definitely found some great people off, off of job boards that work here. But oftentimes, if I have an employee um, that says, hey, my friend is, you know, they're asking about a job and we have a job opening, they're much more likely to get that job than somebody who's applying on a job board because, well, I... I've worked with this person. I know this person. I went to lunch with them or whatever it is. And they give me a name versus I go to Indeed or something, something else. And, you know, I, I'm going through the resumes. Uh, trust me, most business owners, entrepreneurs, they record label owners, whatever, they prefer to work with somebody that they've gotten a referral from. Uh, so if you do all these things, you will have a much higher chance of becoming an a and in the music business. Um, that's why I didn't say, like, you know, just go to a job board and t search out job boards and all that stuff. That can work, but much better chance doing the things that I've stated in this video. So leave us a comment with anything else you think we didn't cover or tips that have worked for you. And hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and we'll catch you in the next video.